We are live. This is the Resellers Wake Up. It is 1029, uh, what is it, Wednesday? And uh, today we're going to have, a little bit later, uh, Robert Bagley is going to be on. We're going to be talking about Amazon, FBA, uh, ways to improve your business, uh, kind of, uh, you know, just different techniques you can do that you're thinking about as far as uh, prioritizing your day and uh, sticking to schedule, things like that. Uh, how to uh, probably going to touch a lot on how to source. Like some of the, when Robert does get on, definitely going to be picking his brain about uh, some of the strategies that he has uh, about how to find places to source and when you're getting started and uh, you know just stuff like that. Uh, first hour probably going to be a little bit more loose on the topics. Uh, the, yesterday I promised to give away a steamer for my 100 subscriber uh, video giveaway and I've did get the video done, and I do have the winner. And I'm probably I'm just gonna announce it today during the show instead of uh, actually I can probably announce it here in just a couple minutes. But uh, yeah, uh, did a little ride along. I'm gonna be posting that later once I get it all edited. But I got some crazy stuff yesterday. Uh, pretty big score, but once again. Way too much clothing, <laughs> but I just couldn't pass on the stuff, man. I mean, it was like Hugo Boss blazers and uh, you know Ralph Lauren suits and stuff like that. But uh, what about you guys? Are you, are you getting any uh, sourcing done yesterday? Nope, going to. I did actually, and it's still in my car. I need to go get it. <laughs> oh, no. I sourced a lot of flour and napkins yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery shopping. Huh? I sourced all that food, so I've got tons of stuff to list today. What did you find? Last week? Oh, man. Okay, I've got Presto, the Presto Bread Cutter. I've got lots of shoes, Allen Edmonds shoes, and um, some, like, vintage suede, like, men's dress shoes, and uh, all kinds of, like, coffee makers. and. Uh, yeah, I think... I don't know if anybody uh, recognizes you. You're on the show every morning, but I've had you on a couple times. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Pinching um, Pesos? I'm Deborah. I, I own Pinching Pesos. Uh, basically, I specialize in parting out small appliances. Um, I do men's shoes, women's shoes, like used shoes that are more higher end. Um, the re resell is normally about 40 bucks on the on any of the shoes that I have, and. Um, Basically anything else, like obsolete electronics, obsolete like old tech, um, that kind of stuff. I've been selling for going to be three years in November. So. And I do a little bit of FBA, and I've got stores kind of all over the place just trying to get into Google search. And why don't you, uh, I don't know if you've got the YouTube video open, but if you post your, uh, if you just say hi in the chat, Everybody can just mouse over your name and subscribe to your channel, and they can, uh, I don't know, do you have haul videos and everything? Or? I do. I do have haul videos. Um, I have some helpful videos, like how to clean curlers, like hair curlers to sell, um, how, you know, different methods that I use for, you know, little things, kind of life hack type, eBay life hack type stuff. Um, and I plan to expand actually on that, on be doing more like seller helper videos as opposed to like a bunch of haul videos because there's enough of those. Yeah, well, that's why I started the show. I mean, I was doing haul videos. I did a couple of them, and I was like, I feel like I'm bragging more than helping <laughs> or, yeah. you know, I mean, nothing to brag about. But, you know, you're just showing off. It's not really so yeah, much bragging. It's like, hey, look at the cool stuff I got. I only paid this much. You know, it's like it's a good it's a good way to, uh, like, if you don't know a whole lot about, uh, like, what kind of stuff to look for, to get an idea of what to look for and how much you should be paying and how much you should be selling things for and things like that. But, I mean, it gets a little boring and for people, and especially, like, when I go out, I'll get, you know, I'll fill up a shopping cart every time, maybe two sometimes. You know, I just get tons of stuff when I go out, and it just, I decide, I mean, I'm still doing them. I try and stick more to being in the thrift store, like what I'm doing, how I'm doing it while I'm there, you know, what kind of yeah. stuff I'm actually finding off the rack. But uh, I think that's a little bit more fun yeah. for me. It needs but, to be washed. That's, I mean, right. that's why I started the show. No, but that's why it's sitting there. Yeah, I think it's really helpful uh -huh. to try to do helper style videos because, I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's enough haul videos. People need help. They need to figure out how to sell that stuff they're hauling. 
Yeah, exactly. But. That's why I did the camel, camel, camel stuff, because that seems to just absolutely freaking perplex people how to use camel, 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 and keepa when they're doing their research, you know? I, I can't, that's the kind of videos I'd rather do than haul videos. Right. I want to get into some more of that as well. I just, I got to build, I'm, you know, I've got like all my stuff on my computer and it's all got all my links everywhere. So I don't really like doing a lot of screen shares and stuff like that. Just too much personal information. Hey, but. that's, that's when I use, when I do screen share, I use a different browser, one that I don't normally use. Like I use Firefox. If I'm going to do screen shares in a video, I use Firefox because I don't use it for anything. So it doesn't have any, per, you know, it doesn't have any of my personal stuff, you know, on tabs or on the toolbar or anything. Yeah, I actually tried to download Chrome because I don't use Chrome, and I was thinking I could just do it with that. But when I tried to download it, they wanted me to install like ten different programs, and I was like, "Is this for real? I mean, are you serious?" Chrome? And they wouldn't let me click through the stuff. I had to install it. To get to Chrome, and I was like, "Man, this this isn't even worth it." That's weird. I don't remember. Well, I I use Chrome's, and I've had it forever, um, but I don't remember having to do all that stuff. But it just you know, pick something, get Opera or whatever, something that you don't norm that you wouldn't use other than for screen shares. I'm just gonna build another computer <laughs> and do something go. like that just for screen shares. That's cost effective. Hmm. <laughs> I get them for nothing, man. Computers I'm just, are... I'm just harassing you, man. <laughs> How you been, Eric? Ah, oh, pretty good. Anything crazy? Got everything boxed up and and out yesterday. I'm gonna try to get some pictures done today. <laughs> get any uh, sourcing done yesterday? Nah, I didn't go out at all, man. Yeah. Only reason I went out well, is because unless you I count going to to Bubba's and letting the kids play in the the ball pit. <laughs> that's about the only thing I did yesterday. Family time is the most important time. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the only reason I went out is because I, when I drop my kid off for preschool, there's a Goodwill right around the corner. And it's the best way I, that I've heard it described is by one of the managers who it was like a district manager or something. It was the first time he'd ever been to that store because it hasn't been open very long. And he was talking to a couple of the other store managers, and he's like, this place is like Nordstrom's. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just really high-end stuff all the time, and it's really common, mostly in the clothing section, but I, mean, I get a lot of Blu-ray players and stuff like that, too. So, I mean, they're every, the place is That's awesome. good. I haven't been to any of the Goodwills in the high-end areas yet. Um, I probably need to because we've got several, like, you know, there's a lot of retirement communities out here, and there's several Goodwills that are out in those areas, I probably need to go look. Is I probably would find like a Blu-ray player and stuff, you know. Yeah, but and it, it seems like some of that stuff around here is just priced through the freaking roof. Like I didn't know Goodwill could actually sell something over fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you I've, know, I see it every once in a while, but for the most part, they're doing about fifteen dollars on Blu-ray players and DVD players. They're doing about ten dollars on VCRs. Uh, you know, stereo, some of their stereo receivers. Like the high end ones, they'll try and get thirty or forty bucks for. But the cool thing about the Goodwills in my area is they got this thing called Club Blue, where if you spend two hundred fifty dollars, uh, it gets put on your card, and they keep track of how much you spend. Once you spend two hundred fifty dollars, then you uh, you get a fifty percent off reward, where everything like your entire purchase is fifty percent off. And I mean, most of the time, I'll end up getting that in like two trips. Right. But yeah, I mean, they don't have anything like that here in hell. I seen like a, a DVD VHS combo that they wanted twenty five bucks for. You know. <laughs> well, that's still. I mean, some of those, especially if it's a recorder, can be big money. I mean, it was get, selling on eBay for twenty. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. You can always check FBA too, but uh, I haven't had very good luck on FBA yet. I've been. I've got a few things listed. I still sell things a lot faster on eBay, but. <laughs> or not FBA, but FBM, just try and fulfill by merchant. Uh, but the prices are higher on Amazon. Stuff just doesn't seem to be selling for me. So I'm not sure if uh, I keep trying to... Camel, camel, camel says that the stuff sells at that price. I just I haven't had any luck yet. So I'm probably going to move everything over to eBay just to blow it out. And, you know, I mean, I don't mind selling something for 50 bucks that I paid 
five or ten dollars for, even if it's yeah. I, I else think the FBA, it. you just gotta kind of get built up to it. You know what I mean? And same thing with Merchant Fulfilled. You gotta have, you know, the room to store the inventory and be prepared to sit on stuff. But once you get it, you know, once you get several months into it and you have a built up of inventory and a built up inventory in your store, then stuff is constantly selling because it's been listed for a couple. Of years. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. And then you won't see it because then you're just, it's more of a long tail, I guess, is what you would call it. And you're just adding to the end of it, and the stuff at the front is what's selling. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And when you're paying $10 for stuff that you're selling for 100 then you can have definitely afford to have the inventory as long as the stuff is selling eventually. You just got to be really careful when you're out there going after the electronics. You have to check those model numbers. You have to make sure that the. Uh, Stuff that you're picking up is good. I mean, I've seen DVD, VCR combos that with the recorders and everything that I mean, they're selling for thirty or twenty, thirty bucks, like you said. And I've seen some that are selling for over a hundred. I've sold some for over a hundred. Uh, so I mean, they're, they're right. out there. Well, it's like the the two VCRs I picked up. One selling at forty, one selling at sixty. You know, but they only had they had five bucks on the single VCRs. Right. Yeah, I picked up a Sony VCR that was on FBA for 90 bucks yesterday just because, I mean, I could have, there were like four or five of them that I could have gotten, but I didn't want to fill up the back of my truck with stuff like that yesterday. Uh, so. Yeah, I, didn't, I haven't even checked Amazon yet. I was just going off of eBay because I know I can sell them on eBay kind of thing, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. If I can't get the, if I can't make a profit on eBay, then I'm not going to pick them up. You know what I mean? I, I'm not pick, I'm not picking up electronics for FBA or for Amazon, but I'm going to list them on Amazon and simultaneously list them on eBay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. I yeah, do the same thing with housewares. So I'll simultaneously list them. I've never had one sell at the same time on Amazon or on eBay. Yeah, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today for sure as far as the Amazon uh, is uh, the cross-listing. I mean, I'm always paranoid, you know, that one thing's going to sell and then I'm going to be away from my computer. I won't be able to take the listing down right away and then the other one will sell. But I guess It'll be... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It'll be helpful when they update the Amazon seller app because it's going to be with sales notifications. This is the next update. So if you get a sales notification on Amazon, you'll know right away to go into your app and take it off of eBay. It'll be easier than having to get on your computer and take it down from Amazon. Yeah, that's kind of the annoying thing about Amazon. You see what you sold, or you see how much you sold stuff for, and sometimes you can kind of guess a little bit, but it's really annoying when you're using that app and you have no idea what you're selling until you get home and double check it. I've been just... I just leave it on my, my web on the phone, and I just pull it up and then click on reserved so it sorts all the reserved items to the top, and then you can see what's basically sold. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I do at home, but uh, I haven't thought to do that on my phone. I guess I just don't concern myself too much because FBA is so automated. All my Almost all my items are in FBA, and uh, I mean, I check multiple times a day on my computer at home so I know if something sells FBM. But uh, yeah, haven't had any FBM sales yet. I guess I, I guess I lied and I did source something yesterday. They gave these out at the game last night. They're replica Spurs championship rings. And They're like super heavy. That that's going on eBay. I know. I I got two because my <laughs> friend's a Mavs fan and she doesn't she didn't want hers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at a Facebook post uh, yesterday and somebody had gotten their power rated seller. Uh, coffee mug from eBay, which, by the way, I have never gotten a damn thing from eBay, and I've been a power seller for years. <laughs> yeah, same here. I even have an anchor store, and I still don't get shit. <laughs> people yeah, get but... all kinds of gifts. I get little stamps, and people get stamps, and little pads, and stickers, and I've never gotten a thing. How do you get on that list? Exactly. What is going on here? I haven't... I guess they just assume we're making enough money that we don't well, need stupid little you know, It's not that I really give a shit, but, hey, if I can get anything free from eBay, I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, by the fourth or fifth comment, people already started posting auctions or sold auctions of that cup <laughs> that they were going for about 20 bucks. So that's the only thing I would care about. I think that's ironic. 
I think they do it so that we buy it from each other and we keep the economy going. <laughs> okay, so we're just snake eating its own tail, right? Yeah. Well, we need we need something to keep the economy going. Yeah, right. <laughs> but <laughs> I just found out my littlest pet shop I picked up yesterday is worth twenty dollars. <laughs> what is it? Let's see. Is that what you're working on? It's the peaches fog. Oh my goodness. Those are just that little toy? Yep. Wow. How'd you look hmm. that up? Just check it on eBay? Huh? Did you just check it on eBay? Yeah. Okay, so you kind of got to know the names of the toys and everything, the names of the figures. I just look it up and find the one that looks like this one, and then I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's called Peaches. Does it have a little, it doesn't have numbers on its feet or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do a lot of times when I, I'm not sure on something. I'll just uh, I'll get on eBay and look something just based on kind of what it is. You know, I mean, once you get used to searching for items, it's pretty easy to figure it out. Uh, just to make sure everybody knows, Robert Bagley, as the, uh, he's going to be on in the second hour. Uh, we were advertised, or we were saying that he is going to be on, and he will be. Uh, it's just kind of early for him. Uh, he'll be on at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time instead of 9, but we'll be running until then. Uh, as for that steamer that I'm giving away, I forgot to look that up. Um, let's see here. Trying to find the video. because I, Like I said, last night I made a video, did a ride-along all day, and then I came home and did the giveaway video. I just didn't get a chance to post it. I was going to edit everything together, and I'll have it done this afternoon, I think. I'll probably do it right after the show today. But uh, I did pick out the winner. So, uh, there you are. Basically, what I did was I just went to random.org. I counted the number of comments and uh, in the thread, and then I just hit random. And the number I got was 12. So, the person who is number 12, just so that you don't have to wait too long, is uh, Brugal Lori. Frugal Lori is the winner of the steamer. So uh, if you're listening, you can go ahead and uh, just give me your information on Facebook. But uh, yeah, even with the 20 extra accounts I created, I still didn't win. <laughs> Congrats, Lori. Good job, Lori. Way to I go. Could, I could get hold of Lori for you. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you could get a hold of her, let her know she won. Get her my contact information so I can get her uh, get this sent out to her. Uh, is uh, is somebody trying to break out of jail? I hear somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah's cleaning a boot. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> I think what, what is it? Control D is the on and off for the mic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just you, well, you I just hit. started hearing it when Mike said something. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even notice it until he mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, that is the sound of work. Oh, is that what that sound is? Such a strange sound. I don't hear that around here. Yeah, I was oh, going to say. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any plans for today? Uh, make up for yesterday that Amazon was down the entire flipping day. Yeah, that was frustrating. I tried to list a few things. I've got a shipment that needs to go out, and I had probably 20 or 30 <clears throat> items that I haven't uh, added to the <laughs> shipment yet and couldn't do it at all yesterday. I decided since Amazon was down, like yesterday afternoon, I was just going to watch Netflix. I was going to watch some like anime or something, and freaking Netflix was down all day too. <laughs> Like, come on. <laughs> well, I don't know. well, you know what? YouTube wasn't down, and you could have gotten caught up on the last 12 episodes of The Reseller's Wake Up, even though you weren't here. Or you were actually here on the show. Right. right. I should go watch those. Or you could have yeah, watched you want, That's if you a great show. Get, if you wanted to take a nap, you could have just watched Resale Ronan's channel. <laughs> <laughs> I could have uploaded some of the, like, 50 videos I've shot and not put on my YouTube channel. Right. You could have watched like the first twelve or so episodes of his haul video. <laughs> <laughs> awesome 
one haul. What? Yeah, one. I, so <laughs> I, I sold uh, I sold Cinderella VHS sealed for seven ninety nine. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that power steamer or that Bissell steamer that I bought at the land pay a couple weeks ago. I mean, I've had that thing broken down and listed for like a week now, and I've already sold three parts off of it. That pretty much paid for the entire haul. Right. Yeah, that's one of the things I've got to take pictures of today. I broke down two different pieces that I, I picked up. One of them was a juicer, and it's like the complete juicer is going for like 15 bucks. If I break it down into individual pieces, including the motor, the motor is selling for 20 mm-hmm. but the, the complete juicer is selling for 15 Don't you love that? That's so what's great I made about, about 50 bucks out of it in the pieces. Yeah, it, it's nice. I mean, it was one of those people that put it back in the box every time, you know. Mm. So it's all everything's in good shape. I think I paid like three dollars for it. That's how I make a lot of my money. Yeah, breaking them, breaking stuff down is probably one of the more, one of the better ways to get the most out of like all those appliances. It seems like most of them <laughs> sell for more. Like each individual piece sells as much for as much as the entire unit, and yep. they go a lot faster than you would think. I mean, I didn't. I was a little skeptical. I've been doing it for a long time, though. I mean, I think the first thing I ever broke down was a espresso machine that I did. God, way before I found out about like all the Facebook groups and all that. But I mean, sure you, just make sure you keep all the pieces in a bin together, so when you sell a piece, you can find it. Yeah. What happens when you? Uh, don't do that, Robin. You tear your house apart, and it looks even worse than it already did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been through that. I lost a Lego once, a little Lego piece that oh. I sold for like five bucks. That was the worst. Yeah. I lost a piece to an airplane model. I mean, literally like smaller than my pinky. And four months later, I was moving, and I found it on the carpet, at, like against the molding in the room I did eBay in. Uh. Yeah, I found this. Uh, actually, I've got it right here. An envelope, and I mailed it to the guy. He was like ecstatic. The model was still sitting on his shelf. <laughs> this is the piece that I lost, and I ended up finding it again like months later. And the auction was already. I she, the person was cool. I refunded him. And, I mean, I would have sent it to him for free if uh, I would have. If the auction still would have been like on eBay's records, but by the time I found it, it was purged. Yeah. Hey Robin, you need to get some, you need to get one of these, and you need to get some of these. Yeah. And when you list something, you write a number on this, and you put that number in your listing. I need to do something. <laughs> I'm gonna have to spend like a week, a weekend here pretty soon, just doing nothing but organizing my freaking house. You you could even use recycled. McDonald's bags if you wanted. Wow. Hamburger wrappers. She's going to have to use some of her packing materials. To <laughs> Just order a bunch of free post office boxes. <laughs> you can the mailbox you can set them. <laughs> Freaking McDonald's bags. Love you, Robin. Hey, you started it. Or maybe I did with my rant. One of the two, one of us started it. Oh, uh, I think I did if you were involved, you probably Chuck started it. Pop tart box. And ever since I shipped Chuck Norris in a pop tart box, y'all like to give me crap. <laughs> <laughs> See, Robin, these free boxes that you get, you can get from the post office. You just write something on the side of it, like blanket controls, and you know what goes in this box? Blanket controls. Right. Yeah, so it's much better to to break a federal law. I know. I will use, I I'll use this box to ship something in eventually. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They, you can still use that box to ship in eventually, but until you need the box to ship, you might as well use it for something. You know what I think is crap is that they uh, they won't let you reuse the boxes that have already been used. I know. I actually had a box that had been used already. It had all the postage written on it. All, it was stamped, and so I took it and uh, wrapped it in paper and, uh, like, 
craft paper and sent it to somebody in New York parcel select because it had already been used. And they got it in New York, and then they sent it back to me because they, like, ripped open a corner of it and saw the priority mailbox. And oh, they tried man. to charge me. And I was like, uh, this was reused. I, I opened it up right there for my postmaster. She was cool. I see her. I talk to her all the time. She's like, oh, well, I guess it had been used once, but you're still not supposed to do this. I'll let you have the item back, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, I just uh, reprinted the postage and sent it out again, and they took it. Yeah. Now, I have seen, like, FedEx and UPS, they don't care. They'll, they'll ship a priority mailbox. <laughs> Rob and Laura <laughs> Lee, time. Recyclers Unite in the chat, so she's got your back. Who's getting the echo? I don't know. I, heard I guess I need to pull up the YouTube. I always forget about that. Uh, if you're on YouTube, just mute it. Oh, yeah, yeah, mute YouTube for sure. Yeah, I just forget to pull it up all the time. I forget that people actually want to watch us. <laughs> a Pop-Tart can contain Chuck Norris. Robin has accomplished this feat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I looked everywhere for a... Dinner yeah. best so I could go as Chuck Norris to the uh, meet and greet tonight, but couldn't find it. I got those two water gun Uzis a couple weeks ago. Never bothered to list them. Somebody's got some. Is that Jake? That's me. I'm here. Is it still echoing? Yeah, it's still echoing, so it's not Jake. Robin. Who's doing it? It's Robin. Oh, it's Robin. Robin. Go ahead and mute me. I already have. <laughs> oh man! There we go. All right, we're good. You can unmute yourself, Jake. It was the, it was the race to mute Robin. Right. And who won it as usual? <laughs> That's right. It's only because Adam's not here. That's yeah, right. Adam is definitely quick on the draw when it comes to that mute button. I think he's got the mouse hovered over her picture at all times. Just That's to not mute. <laughs> I hate it when he mutes me and I'm in the middle of talking. Like uh, sit there yeah. something and he'll freaking mute me and I'm like, oh, <laughs> Adam. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah, wake his butt up this morning. What are so, yeah. doing? Anybody in the audience uh, gonna be in the meet and greet tonight with the? Uh, everybody has their costumes, right? Uh, nope. Uh, I've got my top and my my wig. I'm still uh, debating the leather pants. Oh, that's definitely the most important part of the costume. I'm thinking I'm that, too. Yeah. <laughs> My husband it is. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I'm thinking, so... Uh, oh, <laughs> don't. Don't do it. <laughs> what about you, Mike? You got a costume picked out? I do. Really? So you're going to be on the show? Well, yeah. Oh, I nice. wouldn't miss it for the world. My whole life revolves around the meet and greet. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are kind of a permanent fixture there, huh? <laughs> My entire day is not complete until I've been to a meet and greet on Wednesday. <laughs> what are you going as, Jake? Uh, I'm probably not. Uh, what? <laughs> hey, I am very selfish with my time. I'm, I love the morning show because... I can come on here while I'm working. Mm -hmm. When I get home with the family, it's family time. Yeah. That is the way to do it, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, I tried That's to pick I'm it up. Personal. I love everybody there, but... That's why I don't do the nighttime shows, because, you know, my husband's home. time for, you know, honey and the kids. Right. That's why I decided to make this morning show, because it's like... There's nothing going on in the morning, and that's when you would think more people would be interested in listening to this kind of thing, you know? I mean, people get together, and they have fun or whatever at night, but, I mean, this seems like it's a little bit more, uh, more form like, formative format, I guess. And plus, I mean, everybody's working right now, <laughs> and you're working at home by yourself, and it now, sucks. Hey, Paul, besides YouTube, is there any way to stream this so somebody, like, listen to iTunes or something, can listen to it at work? Yeah, I'm actually trying to build this into a podcast. I've got the website. Um, I know how to do it. 
kind of. I just uh, actually, if somebody knows somebody that knows how to build websites and is cheap. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to Talk be. To anything. Jeff. Oh, oh actually, Midtop said that he um, can help with that if you get with him on Facebook. Midtop. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to get with him. Uh, I know. Uh, who was it yesterday that was? Uh, Working. I, oh, uh, Cali Picker. He had somebody that from Pickers University that was helping him out with his website, but I haven't. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get a hold of him yesterday. I was just too busy. I mean, I got home pretty late, and you know, then I had to get on and have some pizza. And <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have the pizza. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I do want to make. I do want to finish the website. I do want to get the videos, the morning show posted there. And I definitely want people to be able to find it on uh, like Twitter and Pinterest and uh, not just on Facebook. Because, I mean, I think it's kind of hard to find on YouTube right now just because I'm not really sure how to push the views as well, you know. But, uh, I mean, I've had some uh, suggestions and I've been implementing them. But it's, I think that podcast idea is definitely the best way to go, especially just because of the way that I'm like, I've gone back and listened to the show. It seems like it would be pretty good podcast uh, I want to move where Laura lives <laughs> <laughs> she has clothes optional communities around there yeah but notice the second part of that bummer when snow comes yeah well <laughs> here's the thing about that you know I, I, I work in Asheville <laughs> where we have plenty of women that like to um, exercise their rights <laughs> They're generally not the ones you want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the problem with Boulder. Boulder's pretty similar. The ones that are really pushing the limits, not usually the ones that you're yeah. pushing you would the think, limits. You would think something like a topless march would be very popular. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When we um, lived in Moscow, Idaho, there was still a law on the books that anyone could be topless. Mm. Well, some, uh, you know what, we'll use my favorite word, some asshat discovered this law and thought it would be great to take a bunch of chicks downtown uh, topless to have a car wash, you know, where all the mommies walk their kids and that kind of thing. And it started this big, huge thing. You know, luckily it was mainly college girls, so... You know, it was kind of like a girl's gone wild or something. But I'd probably I, get my car washed. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd get my yeah, car washed. Yeah, I mean, it was cr if they wouldn't have been downtown, there would have been no problem with it. But um, I don't think the, women, I don't think the mommies were probably as mad about the women being down there topless, but the fact that all their husbands were in line to get the car washed. <laughs> exactly. The only thing that bothered me was, you know, my son, you know, he he's just you know, looking at these women wondering where their kid is, you know, because <laughs> it was like a nursing thing, basically, you know. He's like, where's their babies, kind of, you know, so I have to collect <laughs> my, my kid. No, they're not, you know, they're not getting ready to feed their babe. They're just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I actually heard about that. I read it on the, new, on the maybe the Drudge Report or something. Uh, that was hilarious. Yeah, well, but I mean, well, like New York, they do it all the time in New York during the summer. But that's because uh, I don't know. It was like 20 years ago. One of the groups fought to get the law changed, so the state of New York, it's legal for women to be topless. You know, so they'll go out and do that stuff periodically. See, here it's still illegal, but you know, so the groups go downtown and do their marches in defiance. You know, and uh, of course the cops aren't going to touch that, so. <laughs> just let them march, you know? Right. I don't have a problem with you running around, you know, running around topless, whatever. You know, I even with our kids, we teach them, you know, your body's your body. You shouldn't, you know. But to us, we don't we don't want them to look at that just as a sexual thing, you know, like <clears throat> women's food. Right. You know, that's, we're big nursing advocates. But anyways... Just, just be respectful about it, you know. You yeah. want to have them hanging out, have them hanging out, but do it in a respectful way, I guess. 
Oh, yeah. so you mean no pasties and twerking? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the twerking. The pasties are fine. It's just the twerking. I never thought in a million years that I would ever hear Eric say twerking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary. <laughs> Hey, I watched the news. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It's one of those things. I mean, it's just our. It's the U.S. is what it is because all that kind of stuff is so commonplace in Europe. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Nobody cares over there, and people don't really care that much over here. I don't think they're I think just the, the ones that do care, care less here oh. about it. You know. Yeah, the, the ones that do care are really vocal about it, and there's still enough people that listen to the vocal people and go, yeah, yeah, right on, yeah, we support you. But it becomes it's still a big deal, kind of. It's, kind of it's called the bandwagon. There's so many people that jump on bandwagons. Yeah, exactly. Poplar just said what's being said right now. I'm wondering if my vid is behind uh. because of all the topless women talk. Uh. <laughs> there shall be no topless women on the morning show. No topless women no. on the morning show. <laughs> That's how you get more views, though. That's how you get more views. Put right? that in the title. Our topless show is women fun. morning show. <laughs> that would probably go viral. Oh, so you can't put it in the title and then not do it. Yeah. That's exactly. just mean. That is pretty mean. <laughs> you did talk about <laughs> pants, though. You were talking about those leather pants and see where that led. Yeah, Bad we'll find out tonight. Started. We'll find, out, we'll find out about those other pants tonight, one way or another. <laughs> See, now I'm just going to have to like be sick or something because there's just too much built up. Oh, yeah, it's all the pressure. Pants. The pressure is building. I know. I, I can't take it. <laughs> yeah. I tried to pick for my costume, actually, and uh, I didn't. I just didn't want to go and buy like one of those piece of crap little printed cloth, whatever. Oh, are those your boots, Mike? Those those are leggings. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for my costume. That's part of your costume? Right on. I can't wait to see it. He's going to have flash dance. And, and which drawer in your dresser did you get those out of? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to the pink ones. I want to outdo you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm dressing up as a as a security officer, so... <laughs> Cheater. Hey, you just got to remember, the man that holds the gun makes the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got Am about I half a pirate's costume done. I might still wear it just because, but... Hey, Paul, I think you should have covered yourself in double-sided tape and just rolled around your room and then showed up as a picker. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked Chad if they could come as a picker, didn't they? I think it was uh, Michael Bomberger. I think. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, that's a little stretching it. I think. Yeah, Chad said something about he was going to dress up as an old Navy poster child, and I said <laughs> I commented that he wouldn't be dressing up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was about to say. Poor Chad and his old Navy coat. <laughs> he dug his own grave. I, I, I told him, I said, I seen some Old Navy and some vintage Fruit of the Loom. Made me think of him the other day. <laughs> yep. He dug his own grave with that one, man. I think he is synopsis with that, because when I was at the store the other day, I kept seeing Old Navy stuff, and I was going to send a picture to Chad. <laughs> I think about that every time I see that stuff. Yep, just take a picture, post it on Facebook, and being like, Chad Pagel, what do you think of this one? Well, I was going to be like, is this authentic? <laughs> <laughs> authentic Old Navy. Yeah, when Chad doesn't come on the show, we have free reign to talk crap. <laughs> I think that's an unwritten YouTube rule. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he can come oh, on any time and defend watching. himself. He can come on anytime he wants and defend himself. But. <laughs> yeah, he's going to jump in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Amy Mead said she loves the bow. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you see the rest of the costume. Yeah. You know, I would probably send you something awesome if you came dressed up in something that involved those boots. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're leggings. 
Yeah. I'll never understand the appeal of a man wanting to dress up like a woman and using Halloween as the disguise. <laughs> it's kind of like all the girls that dress up in the sluttiest costumes possible just because it's Halloween. I never understood that. Why does it have to... Well, he, yeah, says the woman who's looking for her leather pants. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> Open mouth. Listen. I don't question it. Let's just, <laughs> let's just forget that little detail. I'll never understand the slutty costume stuff. Oh, they just want to dress up like sluts. It's at my kid's birthday extreme. party. So it's not slutty, it just has leather pants. <laughs> now i got to find my Iron Man outfit and just say, can I have one? <laughs> well, that's what it was because they were superheroes, so... I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be Poison Ivy, so I was like, okay, I'll be Black Widow when she first came out. Always dressed up as something bloody and gory. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't really dress up. I don't remember the last time I dressed up for Halloween. I was probably oh, no, still, in, still in grade school or something. No, well, actually, my kid's birthday is October 26th, so he always had costume parties for his birthday. You know, and, you know, as the hosting parents, we had to dress up. Yeah. Because that's just fun. <laughs> yeah. And a perfect excuse. <laughs> right? Yeah. Last year, I remember there was one guy that, uh, he was giving out <laughs> candy to the kids and beer to the parents. That was a pretty cool <laughs> house to stop at. <laughs> that would be my friend. <laughs> hey, guys. Wish, uh... Wish Matt a happy Hug a Clown Day. Hug a Clown Day? <laughs> Hug a Clown Day. Clowns. Was this the news about creepy clowns running around Jacksonville, Florida, and stuff like that? Saw that on the news. I know there was a creepy clown over in the UK like a year or so ago that was in this little town, and he would just stand outside of people's houses, staring at their house from the sidewalk and not move for four hours. Or he'd go to the like big intersections with a bunch of balloons, trying to give them to little kids, stuff like that. He was dressed up like the clown from it. But that dude did that for months. That's not cool. Yeah, it was really <laughs> creepy. That's awesome. He would he would probably be on the wrong end of my pistol. Cause... That would be that would be clown <laughs> That would be the more effective than I've got Santa on speed dial. It totally get your kids in check. You take them over to the it clown that stands on the corner. I yeah. hate. Clowns. I think he was like getting on Facebook every morning and he was like, Heidi ho everybody, I'm going to be here and here and here. And <laughs> it was just weird. But... What is the big scare about clowns? I never got it. I mean, Creepy. Clowns. clowns don't bother me, but... I don't, I don't know. know. I hate them. My, my grandma was a clown. I clowns too and my daughter and I, I never understood why. Well, okay, I can see a little kid being afraid of clowns just because you got this person dressed up in this weird outfit with the crazy makeup. You can't see their face. They're obviously out of place, you know. I mean, they're, it's good for, healthy for a little kid to be afraid of clowns. But once they're old enough to understand what they are, it's like, really? Their eyes never match the makeup. That's, that's what it is. Okay. The eyes are never as happy as all that fake mask crap that they have on. Uh-huh. I, I can't, I can't stand them. They just look totally artificial, right? I saw one as a clown for Halloween this year. <laughs> See you later, Sue. Sue's leaving us. Sue is leaving us. Yeah, it's okay, Sue. Yeah, can... Her kids are up, so she's got to start school. Hey, there's Matt. <laughs> yeah, why do you think we started the clown conversation? <laughs> oh, a little bit off topic, guys. If you guys see this book, it's going for about twenty to forty dollars. That's cool. What year is that one? Uh, nineteen eighty-eight Hallmark by Clement C. Moore, The Night Before Christmas. Yeah. Was that the pop-up book? Yep. Yeah, some of those kids' books you got to look them up because you, they're so cheap. I mean, all the Goodwills around here have the paperbacks for like a quarter and the hardbacks for a dollar. So I always scan as many as I can, but most of them are scholastic and they don't show up on Amazon. 
I mean, that's, that's on eBay. I haven't checked Amazon yet. Sorry, Jake. I had a I had a little bit of lag. Sorry. Go ahead, Danica. Oh, I was just saying that's where um, at our local Goodwill that I make more money off of books. Um, you know, at that Goodwill, I make more money off of the books than I do anything else put together. Even you know, sealed board games. Yeah. Uh, well, I get some, books. I get pretty lucky with the board games around here. I find usually I'll find at least one that's still sealed on the rack. Try to avoid all the used ones. I don't really like to uh, mess around with. Uh, I like to mess around with used ones and try and put them together and all that stuff. It's really annoying and doesn't seem like it's a very good use of my time to, you know, make sure spend half an hour making sure that this board game that I can sell for twenty dollars is complete. But anytime I see a sealed board game or puzzle, I usually just grab it. I hate messing with the used board games because around here they tape them all together, mm. you know, with freaking like packing tape that will rip half the box off. Exactly. And I don't ship out board games that are taped where the box is closed. I learned that a, a lot of uh, people buy the uh, pieces and stuff out of used board games, like the Monopoly houses and the scenic characters and the to and the Monopoly tokens and stuff like that, and use them in special needs classrooms. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I have broken down board games a few times. That's another one, though, where it's like, is it really... I mean, yeah, I guess it is worth it when you can take little things that you're shipping out in a little envelope or a tiny box for $1.93 and getting 10 bucks for it. And, you know, you pay $2 for the board game, and you sell yeah, these yeah. pieces for 10 and these pieces for 10 and these cards for 10 but it just depends on how many uh, you end up getting, I guess. Like how many different lots you can make and how fast the different, how popular the game is. Yeah. I mean, I'll buy, like, Scrabble and stuff, and I'll buy Monopoly just for the little pieces, especially if it's, like, a special edition Monopoly. Those Pokemons, man, Pokemon Monopoly, if you can find one that actually still has the pieces in it, just those little things are, like, 15 or 20 bucks. Oh, yeah, I sold one here, like, uh, here recently. It was pretty awesome. I sold the houses and the tokens, and I think I even sold the cards. And the board. And the board. Yeah, the boards are... Like, I've got... I sold a couple of Monopolies over the last couple months that I wish I would have broken up because, you know, I ended up getting, like, $20 plus shipping, and, I mean, I would have gotten way more than that just by breaking them down. I mean, I've seen them, just the little individual pieces, like, all eight pieces. Uh, people sell them for, like, $5 plus shipping. And if you can get that for them, I mean, you're talking eight pieces in a Monopoly box, that's 40 bucks. Uh, totally worth it to go that route. Well, that's, that's a good thing to talk about, though, too, is, you know, time versus money. Uh, a lot of times, as resellers, we don't think about our time being valuable. <clears throat> you just think about, well, if I oh, put this board game together and sell it for 30 bucks, I made $30. But if it took you a matter of, you know, say six hours over a period of a month to get all those pieces together, you, you know what I mean? How yeah. much money did you really make when you could have taken that six hours and went and bought, you know, I don't know, five crock pots. <laughs> or even <laughs> taking that six hours, sold them, you know? Yeah, or taking that six hours and listed 20 or 30 items that you can definitely, you don't have to do any much work for to get 40 or $50 right. an item for that's one of the things we're going to talk about when Robert gets on. He wants to talk about how to help people prioritize their time and uh, their schedule to execute at a higher level. Like that's the way that he described it when we were talking yesterday. Uh, he, I mean, he made really good points when uh, I was talking to him about how important it is for people, and it's one of the biggest traps that we as entrepreneurs and resellers have. Uh, we just we get kind of muddled down and we uh, don't really use our time as effectively as we should be. And it just becomes really easy. There's so many distractions, you know, and we're the ones that are, uh, we're the ones that have to make the decision how to use our time. And sometimes when you're making your decisions for yourself, then uh, you don't have somebody, especially if you like just quit your job and you're used to a boss looking over your shoulder and 
uh, telling you what you need to be doing and things like that, uh, it it becomes really easy to get distracted and it's kind of hard to, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get the hang of really prioritizing your day and making sure that everything you're doing is an effective use of your time and uh, all of your energy because we've only got so much. I mean, time is probably your most valuable commodity. A lot of people, I, like I didn't, I think we talked about this before, that I don't understand how people can't cope with the freedom, you know, how they can't do this when they've got the freedom to do whatever. You know, I just, I guess because I'm not like that, I don't understand it. Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> it's the constant <laughs> struggle for me. It's very, very difficult. I mean, I'm constantly telling myself, okay, I need to stop. I need to stop working on this and go do something else because this is not an effective use of my time at all. You know? I'm extremely yeah. ADD with stuff like that, so I jump around constantly anyway. Yeah, I've got. <laughs> I'm OCD, ADD for sure. Like I'll get once I get concentrated on something, I'm 100% concentrated, but then like something can break my attention and then I just lose all train of thought and now I got to go do something else. Right. One tip. Well, I mean, you know, I don't do much with clothes, but I would assume it's the same way with clothes. If you got a shirt that's only worth ten bucks, and it's got a couple of stains in it. You probably wouldn't pick it up because you got to wash it and scrub it and, and get it ready to be able to sell it. But if it was worth a hundred dollars, then that little bit extra time would be worth it. Exactly. You know? That's how I deal with clothes. I mean, I I make sure that the stuff I'm buying is stuff that I'm paying like a few bucks for, and that I can flip for fifty bucks. You know, I mean, if right. I'm buying a shirt, then I make sure that. I'll get 20 bucks for it, and it looks new. Like, I won't have to do anything except maybe run a steamer over it to get the wrinkles out once I go to take pictures. You know? I mean, right. Well, it's so the same reason I hired somebody. Yeah, it, it cost me money, but, it, you know, it, at the same time, it's saving me time because I'm not doing everything he's having to do, you know. Exactly. So I can move more product and, different, and do different type of things, you know. Right. Yeah. What were you going to say, Brian? Uh, I say one tip is get out of Hangouts, but uh, <laughs> I want to go back to the books for those of you who really source the books. Let's say you walk into a thrift shop that has books. Where do you start at? Like, what type of books do you first go to to start scanning on? Okay. Jesus. Jesus books? What? <laughs> Jesus sells. Yeah, religion is... Oh, yeah. Bibles, really? Bibles, there's money. I feel they bad about be. selling them, but there's a lot of money. I, in I, you know, all those that that big shipment I sent in. The first first five books I sold out of that shipment yesterday were all God related. I had the same thing when I first sent in my uh, first shipment to Amazon. The first five or six items that I sold were all religious books. And then the relig I think I sold all my religious books and they just stopped coming in. But uh. you have to think about it. People are there are a lot of people out there that are lost, you know, and they're searching for something. They're trying to fill the hole, and that's why religious books sell so well and so consistently, you know. And then there's people that already have their faith and they want to deepen their faith. But I think more of it, if you can do the ones like you know, searching for whatever, you know, the books like that. Well, I think also with those religious books, it's an item that people buy as gifts more often, so they're not so concerned with how much they spend. Oh, um, yeah. So, I mean, like, if you get, if you look at Rich Dad Poor Dad books, you know, those are freaking awesome. Everybody who's, I've ever talked to that's read it, uh, any of his books are like, yeah, his books are great, listen to him, he's got good stuff. But you get on Amazon and they're all penny books, and right? Like Millionaire <laughs> Next Door and all these other like entrepreneur books and all these motivational books and stuff that'll help you improve. But I mean, I think a lot of the religious stuff is more for like you know people at church giving it to some new person well, that came showed up in the congregation. Not every got a great point about pagan books. Pagan books smell like hotcakes. Yeah. What were you saying, Deborah? Not every community has those bookstores either. Like, not sure. every city has Christian family book center and all those different bookstores. Plus, they sell their books at retail price. They yeah. don't give you a discount. It's thirty nine ninety five or twenty four right. ninety five. Whatever's on that 
you know, book covers, what it costs, and they're very expensive. Right. So yeah. anytime that I've ever tried to buy any type of, you know, religious, you know, books, I always look on Amazon or eBay because any discount is good. So stuff like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, spell you books. Those, you get those out of your personal collection? What is that? This one's personal. <laughs> this one right here is, actually. Lieber Null. What's it about? Psycho. Chaos I thought Mike was going to ask him why you were selling his books. <laughs> this is a PG joke. Just remember, before you explain that book. Yeah. That kind of stuff is uh, it's pretty good money. I mean, it, it sells pretty fast, but... I mean, this is about as far or as close to a religious discussion as I want to get on this show. <laughs> <laughs> talking about what we're selling, yeah, that's as religious hey, as Hey, the other thing is, uh, you know, like I was talking yesterday, reference books. You know, yeah. the, uh, the collector stuff. Where did I put that one? You know, like uh, Chilton manuals are really good. If you see, like sometimes if you uh, go to the how-to section... You can just go straight to the Chilton manuals, and those are always going to be worth something. Uh, they're kind of slow movers, but they move. And uh, let's see what else. Like a lot of the how-tos, you do have to scan them, but it'll be one of those things where you scan five or ten books, and one of them will be worth 20 or 30 bucks, and the rest might all be worth just be penny books. And you even got to look at the penny books. Uh, it's hard when you're out there, and you're especially with the Amazon seller app, like going through and checking everything, but uh, it's... It's worth it to do that. And then uh, as far as the, like when I'm out there sourcing, I don't usually source books for Amazon specifically. I've got uh, places in town that I take and sell books to. And I'll just buy any, uh, like I'll go through the trade paperbacks, you know, the ones with retail prices of like fifteen ninety five or uh, ten ninety five or whatnot, like the bigger size paperbacks. And I don't care if it's, fiction or whatever. I won't even scan them. I'll just take every one that looks new and uh, I take them to this bookstore that buys them all on average for about, uh, they usually give me about a dollar or two for them and they're kind of, it's right next to two different Goodwills so I mean it's, it doesn't take me any extra time really and then you know they give me their uh, they give me store credit. And I'll give you some of the top ones that are in my Amazon right now. My my most expensive book is on photography. And I, if I remember correctly, it was a pretty large book on like everything that had to do with photography. I've got that listed for 100 Next is the Adobe Flash CS4. That was a, a nice, big, thick reference book. I have it for 80 The next is uh, the Opal book, which is on collecting opals for 80 the Encyclopedia of Glass Paperweights, 80 bucks. A book on clocks, 75. The American Heritage History of Colonial Act Antiques, 50. So, so that stuff. gives you an idea, you know, how well reference books can do for you. All those books were under a dollar. Nice. All right, guys, it's the second hour, and as promised, we've got Robert Bagley on, RB3. Go check hey out. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Morning. Hey, Robert, if you want to just type a little message in the chat there, everybody can just mouse over your name and subscribe to your channel. I've also got your uh, channel in the, the name of your channel in the comments section so that people can find it more easily. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, on YouTube. If you what, bring... um, I don't even know my... Ch I think my channel's just simply uh, Robert Bagley. It's RB3 Bagley, actually. Oh, it is? Thank you. Yeah, I learned something <laughs> new today. All right. Yeah, I did look it up before I started. I've been subscribed to you since you put out your first video. Your story is definitely unusual. And, I mean, you hear people sit there and talk about it, but, I mean, you're, like, the real deal. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm uh, I'm honored to be on the show this morning. There, I just sent it. I just It's RB3 Bagley. According to Paul, we'll trust that he's right because I don't know. I'm... I'm somewhat low tech in what I do. I've not ever had a YouTube channel, so this is all new to me. Uh, what did you want me to do? Start out with my background, or yeah, please. Okay. 
So yes, I came from uh, the corporate America. Uh, in my 20s, I started a, car a carpet cleaning business, which got me into the flooring industry. Um, I built it from just a uh, pickup truck and a portable carpet cleaning machine. Maybe some of you have done this work before. I started doing that in college for money under the table. Long story short, I built it up in my 20s to having five trucks on the road and upwards of 15 employees. In 1998, I sold that business uh, for personal reasons and financial reasons. And then uh, I uh, actually, for about a year and a half, I put together a business opportunity in a box. It was an awning cleaning, awning profit system. So I was teaching window cleaners. Uh, power washers and carpet cleaners how to use their uh, existing equipment to clean awnings. Uh, so I would sell my, uh, I, I made some videos, wrote some manuals and went around to the trade association uh, trade shows for these individual niches and uh, sold these kits. Um, uh, I went bankrupt doing that actually so I went to corporate America for 15 years as a uh, sales executive and then a sales uh, regional vice president of sales for a uh, carpet manufacturer and then my last stint I was a, um, a sales trainer believe it or not uh, sell, uh, training sales people but um, my daughter uh, had some medical issues about a year ago uh, our medical bills started to pile up now granted I still had a two hundred thousand uh, dollar a year plus job but our medical bills were starting to pile up so I started to sell books part-time uh, so it was, it was nice to hear about books as I was coming into the show uh, on FBA and um, you know you can see some of my uh, whiteboards that I've done where I started out last November with ninety eight dollars in sales um, long story short four weeks ago I quit my corporate job um, uh, at the time when I quit, my uh, sales were 23,000 gross, uh, bringing in about 20% margin. Of course, plowing everything back into the business to keep it growing. We grew it organically, didn't take much out of the business. And this month, our goal is to uh, hit a thousand dollars a day gross between Amazon and eBay. Um, right now, we're averaging um, a little over a thousand dollars a day. So we may we uh, we're close to hitting that 30k mark for October. Wow, so that's thirty thousand dollars gross in a month, and I mean, uh, that's obviously uh, <laughs> good enough numbers. Now, how do you accomplish that? Do you have a lot of employees? Do you? Is it just your family? How do you do it? Well, I've been doing it all on my own part time, which is another you know testimony. Uh, once in a while, my eleven-year-old daughter will uh, you know uh, pitch in. My in-laws have been with us. Uh, it, my mother-in-law likes doing the poly bagging while they're watching TV at night, so I keep her busy doing that. Um, my wife's nephew moved in with us about three weeks ago, and so he's been working maybe uh, eight to ten hours a week, helping me pa uh, list, pack, and ship. I actually. Uh, got him uh, as an administrator on my FBA account, so now he knows how to list. He's 20 years old. He's infatuated with what I'm doing. Um, and uh, hey, I just got an order on eBay. Praise right. the Lord. <laughs> uh, just love that. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, this look at guys. This is exciting. I, I love what you guys are all doing and trying to accomplish. Everybody has their own goals. Realize I throw out big numbers, uh, but I have no choice. Okay, I have a huge income to replace. Um, so you may hear my numbers and think that's awesome, and it is. And uh, in, in what God has done in my life in a short period of time with this business and what He's showing me, I'm going to be doing. As you can tell, I'm a man of faith. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, hey, anybody, if I can do this, I'm a simple guy. Anybody can do this, and yes, I've been doing 85% of the work myself. That means forcing, listing, packaging, prepping, shipping, uh, watching the listings, finding new sources. Uh, right now, I'm working on private labeling with some Chinese manufacturers. Uh, the Gilmans helped me, you know, pull me in that direction, and Andy Slammons has hit me over the edge. Uh, Andy's got a show called Slamazon. If you uh, have ever watched a spreecast, you should check him out. Um, I have mentors like Chris Green and uh, Sam Cohen who does 250000 a month on FBA, mostly with CDs, DVDs, and books. 
Um, I have other mentors like uh, John Gorillo, who just goes out. He's 57 years old, and he sources like a maniac every day. So uh, I pay money to be on some of these people's groups, um, and that's what's helping me, you know, uh, find things. I mean, John gave me a tip last week that grossed me a thousand dollars in about four days. Wow! Uh, <laughs> just doing retail, uh, doing retail arbitrage, Paul. Okay. Now some of these, uh, not. First, you said that you started with books. Uh, obviously, you're, sounds like you're doing uh, a lot more retail arbitrage now. I mean, where do you go to source as far? I don't need specific names of stores, but like, what kind of stores do you go to? What kind of uh, like do you do a lot of garage sales? Uh, are you doing more books or still doing a lot of books? I mean, what kind of like what would you say the majority of your business is these days? Yeah, good question, Paul. Um, by the way, I, I applaud you what you're doing with the show. Uh, I know it takes a lot of commitment to do a show. What are you doing? It's five days a week. Yeah, we're doing it five days a week. Uh, I mean, it's a lot. It's a little less commitment than you think. We were getting up every day anyway. We were getting together for these daily hangouts anyway. And uh -huh. I just I decided that it was a it would be good to uh, maybe just make them start making them live just so people can see what we're doing and so we could have cool guests like you come on and. Uh, actually get peop other people to see exactly how you do things. Uh, I mean, it does take a lot more time than just the two hours a day that we're on air, obviously, to make it a decent show. Yeah, and, uh, but sure. I'm working for it. You know, I mean, I'm trying to find ways to get the message out a little bit more. I'm, I plan on making it into a podcast. I've got the website and everything. Just need to get that built. But I mean, I, I want to build it into something. I want it to be something that people actually like. To, like a lot of people are watching someday, but for now, you know, we're just having fun and we're trying to figure out how to do it. I mean, I'm yeah. not a, I have no idea what I'm doing. We just, just, just jumped in the deep end, you know. I mean, it's something yeah. to do for now. Well, uh, let me know how I can help you. Let me answer your question, and I think Melissa uh, S had a question as well, or am I answering her question? Um, let's see, Melissa. Yes, I missed that one, but go ahead and. S oh, okay, what would be Plan B if sales fall off after quarter four? <laughs> um, hey, you know I may have to acquiesce here, folks, in five months and and get on my YouTube channel and go. Okay, I had to take take a part time job. I mean, if that's what it takes to get back in the game and to keep things moving, I'm not going to stop doing this business. If I have to go back to corporate America, um, then I will. Uh, I think I have some transferable skills and, and uh, so yeah, I guess my plan B would, would be to go get a J-O-B, but I don't want to get a J-O-B. I want to do this. I don't have time for a job. I want to build this business, man. This is where it's at. E-commerce is the future, everybody. You know it. Uh, and so this is where this is what I want to do. So anything I have to do to go back to corporate America will just be an interim thing to infuse more cash, to, to build more product, and to take this business to the next level. How's that? Exactly. That's my <laughs> whole philosophy on the thing. You know, I mean, I want to be. I I've got the skills. I mean, if I wanted to go and get another job, I could cut my hair. I've got the clothing. You know, I could put on a suit and get into. I mean, I've got some. One nice thing about being a reseller and being into clothing is I've got plenty of nice clothes that nice. I can uh, go to get in and uh, take to an interview. And I mean, I'm not concerned with getting a job. Like, if I can get a job, it's am I going to be able to get a job where I make as much money as I do doing what I do? Yeah, and, and um, one of the things, that, uh, one of the reasons I started the YouTube channel is um, Chris Green. I called him, and if you may, if you don't know him, he owns Scan Power, and he's a big power seller on FBA. And I called him, and I said, "Hey, I'm quitting my two hundred thousand dollar job today." And he said, um, "Man, that's pretty bold, you know. Uh, why don't you document everything you're doing?" Because he goes. I know a lot of people that have quit thirty to eighty thousand dollar a year jobs, and they're e easily, pretty easily able to quickly replace that income with eBay and FBA. But I, he said, I don't know anybody, including myself. He said uh, that has done what you're doing. Um, so I figured the best way to document it is to just get myself in front of a camera every week and show my numbers, show what I've learned, uh, thank the people like you, Paul, and the Gilmans, and. Um, and Chad uh, and those uh, and, and Paul Beagle who have um, you know just t taken notice of what I'm doing and, and, and um, helping get the word out. Um, so let me answer your question about sourcing. 
because that, that seems to be everybody's big question for me. Um, I moved away from books, and I'm not telling anybody they have to do this, but I needed to find products that people bought every day. And so, um, you know, hey, when I go to garage sales, sure, I'll pick up a book if the numbers work. I don't go to um, book sales anymore. I was doing that for about three months. Books um, take a lot of time, and hey, you only order a book for me how often? Uh, I need people that are going to buy things from me, consumable things. Uh, not to say I don't look at uh, uh, some of the bolos out there, because I've got some to share with you this morning, but I look at those as gravy. Um, looks like you got some nice shoes there. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, they're Alan Edmonds. <laughs> nice, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I source at um, you know a lot of different places. My favorite places are the wholesale clubs currently because they are wholesale. And uh, yeah, you have some competition, but look, at, people don't want to buy. It's people that have the money to buy online things that that that, that they need every day. Really don't want to fight the crowds at a BJ's or a Sam's Club or a Costco. Um, so I really look at it like I'm shopping for America now. And, um, and now I want to shop not only for America, but I want to go global. If anyone caught uh, Chris, Chris Green's uh, latest spreecast, he uh, went to Amazon last week in a closed-door session with the executives, uh, and they had a, a, you know, a nice back-and-forth session on uh, what we need as resellers and what Amazon needs from us. And the big thing they said is, guys, international is just a wide-open blue sky. Um, uh, and so there's not many ships on that sea yet. Uh, so I want to be on the front end of private labeling. I want to be on the front end of international. Um, so I'm sourcing at places like uh, the big box stores. Um, I source at grocery stores. I source at office supply stores. I source at the um, wholesale clubs. I think um, when there's garage sales that are convenient, I'll hit them. Again, those are nice because they bring my margin up. And what I tell everybody is you got to have a good mix in your business. You can get some high margin stuff at the thrift stores and the antique stores and the garage sales, but that should only be able to uh, complement a business that you have a built foundation of replenishables that you're selling every day. For somebody like me, um, that may not be a good model for, for some people, but that's the model I have to do because I have to count on uh, a nice foundation of sales every day with some replenishables, and I'm maniacal about re restocking my my replens, as you might have noticed from some of my videos. Uh, but then I've earned the right then to go find the bolos and uh, some of those um, you know juicy high profit high margin things. Right. I'll stop talking for a while. <laughs> oh no, we love it, man. Keep it going. You're you got such great information, and we love to hear it. Uh, I'm kind of the same way. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. The reason that I started to try to get into clothing is because I'm following Steve Rakin. He was one of the uh, videos makers that got me into YouTube and got me watching a lot of YouTube videos. And uh, then when he came out with his clothing uh, ebook a couple of months ago, I just was like, man, this is so easy. I got to go and do this and try it myself. And you know, I just kind of jumped in with two feet. Started buying a lot of clothes, and now I've got a pretty good pile <laughs> that needs to get listed. And but I mean, it's real easy to get lost and stuff like that. But I, I I like what you're saying about like the retail arbitrage and finding those replens and everything. Now, one of the biggest problems that I have is just like uh, when I go to a store and you know I find that ten dollar item that is selling on Amazon for thirty five dollars with a ranking of a thousand, and there are fifty of them on the shelf, being able to afford to clear that shelf. Uh, I mean, how do you, for somebody that's got limited funds, limited resources, maybe they can't just go and drop a thousand dollars on product and then have to wait two weeks before they start getting a return on that. What do you, uh, what do you tell those people? First of all, um, am I getting uh, an echo? I saw somebody say I was. Oh no, no, you're good. I fixed it. Oh, okay, good. Wow, you're good. So yeah, um, guys. Look, at, I started this business with no cash. Um, I started selling books off my shelf because I'm a, I'm a graduated seminarian and I had a lot of books and I just used those to plow back into the business. Um, I think I, I think I infused about four grand into the business uh, with like a 401k loan while I was still working, but I quickly paid myself back for that. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm doing some more. Uh, I'm having to go deeper with um, 
you know, using some uh, credit wisely. Uh, but hey, if you got limited funds, then find some uh, replens that you know. Even way I teach people is look at um, if you don't have the funds, use what you got and keep flipping the profits back in. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Paul. But you know what I did is just if I found like uh, Gerber baby food and I was making three bucks every time I turned one. Then I was, you know, maybe buying a hundred dollars worth of it, and then I'd sell three hundred dollars worth of it, and just plow it back in until I, you know, built it up to a place where they, maybe I could start pulling money out of it for myself. Um, so, yeah, that that does answer the question pretty well. Uh, so basically, you did the same thing that I think a lot of people in FBA did to get started, you know, just starting out with books. They make it a little harder now that they've gated off DVDs because uh, back in a year ago, I would have told everybody just go through your DVD collection because a lot of that stuff you can sell it on eBay. For most DVDs, go for about five bucks on eBay. But if you get on Amazon, some of them are crazy, you know. And it's a lot easier to list them on Amazon. It's a lot faster. But I mean, with the books, everybody's got books. Everybody can find books really, really cheap. My one of my biggest sources for books is just going to garage sales. And if I see a somebody with 10 boxes of books, I don't ask them how much is this book. I ask them how much do you want for all of these books. And most of the time, they're just like, you want to take them all? Yes, take them all, 20 bucks, you can have them. And you're going to go through and find a couple hundred bucks worth of books pretty easily. And uh, I mean, that's like that's probably the best way to get started with Amazon. But like you said, that's not the way to get started if you want a consistent income. Uh, I mean, they're... I've been playing around with video games and stuff like that. I've been pulling stuff off of eBay that I can still sell on Amazon and sending it to them. And, you know, the stuff sent, selling, but the stuff that I've noticed where I'm making a good return seems to be like those items that I find that the stores are restocking themselves. And I know I can go and, you know, once you find a couple of items that you can replan and you know where you can go to pick up those items and, uh, you know, start small, you know, it's, uh, dollar two dollar items that you can flip and make seven or eight dollars on uh, or ten dollars on uh, you know five dollar items that you can make eighteen dollars on I've been finding a lot of that stuff and I mean it's not yeah I mean it's uh, just a matter of scheduling you know prioritizing helping we were talking earlier about uh, how to kind of prioritize your uh, like what you need to do during the day, making a schedule, figuring out what you have time for and what you need to get done. And we were talking about that, you and I, yesterday. Uh, what, how, like some of, you were going to talk about some of the ways that uh, you do that. Yeah, you know, it becomes a priority of for me of the replens, and uh, especially my high profit replens. I've got a few that bring me seven to twelve dollars, and they turn every day. Um, and, I, and I'll just act, I'll just go back real quick and say, hey, use those high profit book sales that you get from the garage sales. You know, you want to build a nice little replan business. Take the money you're making from those books and and some of the stuff you're flipping on eBay, and uh, and plow that into maybe a few grocery items, maybe some dry good items that you know don't have you don't worrying about expiration dates and such uh, to start your FBA business because uh, majority of your listeners I assume are eBay but I know a lot of you are Amazon too. Can I ask you one quick question while we're still on that point? Now yeah. you you started uh, about a or you've been doing this for a while you didn't have to get ungated for anything did you? I mean you were already approved for everything before uh, they started gating off like grocery and beauty and stuff? Yeah, but I had to ungate out of DVD. I'm currently trying to get ungated in automotive. I uh, paid a consultant to help me get ungated in clothing. And uh, that eBay order I just got is clothing that I have listed on Amazon and in the Amazon fulfillment centers. And I just used the multi channel fulfillment to send that to the eBay customer that just bought that shirt. Uh, okay. By the way, I bought that shirt wholesale at Costco. So okay. bought it for $19.99 and sold it for $34.99. Uh, $36.99. Okay, so you're not afraid of just doubling your money on FBA? Huh? You're not afraid of only doubling your money when it comes to FBA? What are your margins? Well, if I can sell 2,000 products in a month and, and average $5 profit on each, I mean, do the math. I know, <laughs> exactly. So when you're when people talk about how you should be tripling your, uh, like you want to buy something for this much and get three times that much 
they're only that's when you're kind of smaller scale. But once you start to scale up and really get a lot of stuff in your inventory, then it's okay to lower those margins and start to focus more on volume. Then on the replens, I look at this shirt as a replen because I constantly stock it and I constantly sell it. So yeah, and if it's a replen, and that's what con constitutes a replen for me, is something that I keep stock because it continually flows every week. Then I don't need to have that high margin. But when I'm going out sourcing for bolos, like this thing right here, I got for fifty dollars at an office supply store on clearance. It's list. I just listed it at ninety four fifty. It's got a twenty seven hundred rank on FBA. It's hot. Okay, I bought three of these. Um, so again, I can't stress enough, guys. Mix your business. Get it, get your replan straight. You're always going to have to circulate maybe 20% because they're going to fall to the wayside because someone gets on it and puts a goofy price on it or Amazon gets on it or you can't get it anymore. But that earns you the right to then go get bolos. Here's another one. Check this out. This, again, I got at the same office supply store on clearance. It's a Kodak um, fast, easy, and fun personal photo scanner. I got it for $23. The buy box is $259.99. Wow. Nice. That is awesome. Okay, yeah. so mix your business. Now, how did I do that? I earned the right to get that bolo because I happened to be going into that office supply store to get a replan. Oh, what happens when you put yourself in the way of success? That's what I always tell people also. Um, you've got to be in the right place in the first place before you can ever be in the right place at the right time. Oh, Jeff, by the way, I have four of these. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's really important. If you're, uh, if you're not getting out there all the time and you're not constantly working, and const you've, you've got to be in front of it. You know, I mean, you've got to be out there and put yourself in a good position where you can find this stuff or you'll never find it. Hey, now, are, let's, talk, let's talk about online arbitrage. Um, oh, did someone have a question? I was just going to say, you were talking about uh, diversifying, and I know going international is kind of along those lines, and there was a few questions um, about how how you're going international. Does it, does it mean like offering items internationally on FBA, or does it mean like actually going to, like putting stuff in the other countries to sell? Great question, uh, and I look at I am on the just the very tippy tip 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 of this iceberg, so I can't go too deep except to tell you that I will be working on opening up a FBA UK uh, fulfillment by Amazon UK account. Um, I, I do have a um, Amazon uh, Canada account, and these are separate accounts, and you kind of have to get ungated in, in those ter categories, but it's a lot easier in the other countries. But yes, to answer your question, I will be uh, shipping product and stocking it in the FBA warehouses overseas. I will not be doing uh, merchant fulfill. Did Danica, did I answer your question? Feel free to interrupt oh, yeah. me anytime. Um, no, I, I, you're just, you're, you get on such a roll when the information is so good I didn't want to stop you. Um, people were wondering whether you were talking about, you know, uh, opening up global on Amazon or if you were talking about um, the the other the Amazon in other countries. Yeah, I'm going to use the Amazon platform for everything I do uh, globally. Yeah, and uh, I know global shipping. They've got the global shipping program on eBay now as well, or you can choose to ship things yourself globally. How do you handle global shipping on eBay? Well, up until last week when I watched the uh, resellers uh, hang out, I was clicking that little box to ship it internationally, but I hung out with Danny uh, Ackerman last week, and uh, she um, she confirmed what you guys were saying on that reseller society that uh, take that uh, checkbox off. So now I no longer put the um, offer international on eBay. Uh, I've yet to fulfill an order now. Maybe the one I just got is. I've yet to fulfill one on my own, but I'm going to try it because you guys all said uh, people are onto that and they're paying way too much, so you're going to lose sales. Um, I'm sensing just the opposite, but I don't have enough data to, to, to figure that well, out. So I was, I've done three orders with the international uh, eBay, and I thought, man, this is great. And then you guys kind of rained on my parade. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so I don't know. I'm testing it now the other way, but I may go back because I haven't gotten any lately. So, Well, I'll tell you, I've done, uh, I usually get about one out of ten uh, international, and I do use the global shipping program. But in the last week, I've had three different people cancel the orders that bought something internationally because they didn't know that the shipping was going to be so high. And these are items where, you know, they're paying $15, $20, $25 for the item, and uh, the shipping ends up being like $30 or $40. I had a guy that got charged, he bought a $70 pair of pants that I was just going to put in a medium flat rate box, and they tried to charge him like $85 just for shipping on those. And, I mean, I had it set to the correct uh, stuff on uh, eBay, like as far as the package size and everything and the weight. So, I don't know. I I, I'm thinking about just taking that off because I've had to a few times actually cancel a listing, cancel an auction, relist the item, and then sell it to them again without the international shipping so that I could uh, control the price of the shipping because you, you have no control. I don't do uh, global shipping anymore um, <laughs> because you also lose that money that you get as part of your discount. You can make 10 or $15 on international shipping just off of your top-rated seller discount. Right. Well, let me ask you guys then. Uh, I offer free shipping on everything uh, domestically, so um, how does that work when I get an international shipment then? Uh, it's act you'll they, they will charge you. Pay, pay if you're the shipping using for the international, I do the same thing, and so you just you end up making more money on the international sale because you're also pocketing the uh, the cost of shipping that you, it, you worked into your price. All right, so you're saying I better raise my prices to include international shipping? No, no, no. no, no. I'm saying offer <clears throat> offer international shipping, charge for it. Offer free domestic and charge for international. Exactly. So do I need to put that in my listing? Him. What's that? Do I need to put that in my listing somewhere? It's all automatic. Yeah, on eBay, when you scroll down, when you're listing an item or if you're using Octiva, it has two different spots for domestic and international shipping. Right. If you're if you're offering free shipping, you have to also offer free international shipping. Otherwise, it'll just either you're not offering international shipping at all, or if you're offering the global shipping program, you'll ship it. You'll still offer free shipping, or you won't get any of the shipping, but you send it to Kentucky and then they send it out. You know what I mean? And right. uh, but I mean, you can set it to free domestic shipping and then just have everything. Uh, you, you can, can charge it to whatever country you want. Yeah, you charge for international. So currently, I don't have anything checked under international, but I have domestic free shipping. So what you're saying is I will automatically get extra money for the international sale. Yeah, when they pay for shipping, if it's an international sale and you're uh, packaging and shipping the item yourself and you're not using the global shipping program, if you charge for international shipping, then you'll get the payment from them for the shipping. You'll just have to send it directly to them instead of sending it to the global shipping warehouse. Right. All right, I'm confused, but that's all right. We won't take up. <laughs> it's all good. Well, let's try and unconfuse you a little bit. And uh, we were just about, we were just to get about to get into how you prioritize your day and how you kind of get focused and make sure that you're doing the things that are most beneficial and uh, most productive for what you need to get done. All right, great. So one of the things I taught as a sales trainer. Um, <clears throat> to salespeople is um, don't get caught up in the whirlwind. The whirlwind are all those activities that you have to do to keep the business running, right? But you've got these goals over here like international and private label and some of those things that I'm trying to work on and those are out there but I also have the whirlwind of the daily business going on here with you know getting the listings up and sourcing and handling some of the issues online and all that and so you really have two forces that are um, uh, kind of going against each other here you've got the whirlwind that keeps the business running which is life support guys life support but then you have your goals and the things that you want to do to take your business to another level with private labeling and whatever it is maybe your eBay you want to go FBA maybe your FBA you want to go eBay maybe you want to go Etsy maybe you want to go some other multiple ch uh, channels maybe you want to start a retail store I don't know those things take time and so you actually have to time block and go okay I'm gonna spend two hours a week or four hours a week and I'm gonna put a, a big rock in my calendar and I'm just gonna work on those things that are gonna help me achieve my goals okay 
And so um, how I do it, and uh, and it's been a struggle, you know, because I got so many things I'm working on right now. I'm hiring a virtual assistant to to handle some of my uh, listings to put my eBay listings on Amazon and vice versa. And so that's going to take time, you know, to get them up and running, get them assigned onto my accounts, and figure that out. But I know that in the long run, that's going to really yield me a lot more return on my time and energy invested. So what I would tell everybody is. You know, write. You know, a lot of people go write down the things you're doing every day and see how much of it is, you know, whirlwind versus working on your goals, and really start mapping out and get jealous on your time um, about what you're doing so that you're maximizing the return on your time and energy invested. Now, you being on the show, learning and educating yourself, sharing and learning and gleaning from one another, that should be a priority because that's that's how I'm doing this. I'm learning from other people. I've got to invest time to be on Google Hangouts. I've got to invest time on being on a few screencasts. But I've gotten really picky about what I'm doing with those now. Um, so at some point you got to figure out, okay, i got to drop this Google Hangout. i got to drop this screencast. i got to drop this and just hone in on these one or two things so that I'm out you know, doing the things that yield me the biggest return on my time and energy invested. You guys are all sorcerers, not sorcerers, but sorcerers. <laughs> and so look at you got to maximize the time you're sourcing. But then look at you know Dave Gilman said it on the on one of the Google Hangouts the other day. Don't let those uh, don't keep, don't get your stocks to the point where you're going to be burned out and not even want to handle that mountain of listings. And so now you've got to be jealous about your time on. Okay, I'm going to set these couple hours aside just for listing. Yeah, I know there's this garage sale over there. And yeah, I know there's this big sale at at, uh, at Staples and. Right now, by the way, it's 15% off everything in Staples till Saturday. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> you know, you got to maximize your time, but if you got all this stock building up, it's not making you any money if you're not putting the listings on. So there's just this constant you know, thing, that these, these two um, things that are constantly competing against each other. It's, it's the time to list, the time to source, time to find out new ideas. Just, just be very... Um, jealous with your time, and and and, and oh by the way, um, you gotta look at you, you you gotta spend time with family, right? So you gotta build these things in, and the whole reason we're doing this, guys and gals, is so that we have a better lifestyle. Um, so figure out how to duplicate yourself. Uh, I have consultants do things for me, like ungate me in categories. I have consultants do things for me, like my sales tax. Um, I don't do that anymore, right? I'm funneling that stuff out as much as I can because I know that if I'm going to find these, I got to put myself in the way of that. Um, do online arbitrage. Once you get some replants, you can certainly go order them online. That saves your time going out. But sometimes you got to go out and find what's out there, and that's why I like um, doing the replants is because it puts you back out there. And oh, by the way, when you're going to get another replan, that's where you find stuff like this. You know, online you can't so much do that, right? Online you kind of you got to do your research, and that takes time. And, and sometimes you don't even see what you're getting till you get it, and then you got returns. So you got to mix in online arbitrage with that retail arbitrage. But again, I think the, you have to have a healthy mix of the two because it maximizes your time. Uh, I can order um, 15 American Girl dolls online at two in the morning. I don't have to go running to the mall to go get those. Right. So uh, now you've also talked about how you cross list between eBay and Amazon. Uh, now, are, can you explain a little bit how you do it, just without having the uh, like? I'm always paranoid about it. Uh, just like one item's going to sell on eBay, and then somebody's going to buy it on Amazon as well before I have a chance to take it down or whatever. Do you use any apps or programs, or do you just uh, under, how do you do it? Uh, well, currently, uh, there's. I, I was on a free trial with M, MCF, I think it is. You can Google it, MCF uh, Systems or something. I don't know. I never even got to it. I, I never even got to using it. Um, I did, so my free trial ran up. Currently, I've just been, uh, as I'm putting new stock in on Amazon, I'm just going back into eBay and popping that on. To your point, Paul, i got to find a way to automate that because two weeks ago, I did a boo boo, and I said on my eBay that I had you know two of these in stock, or one in stock, and I went to 
FBA to tell them to fulfill the order, <laughs> there was nothing in there. So I had to run out and go get that, okay? Waste of time? No, nah, not really because I picked up a whole bunch of other stuff. But, you know, I could have it, – it, it made me scramble. So I, as soon as I found out a way to automate this, uh, and maybe these virtual assistants that I'm hiring can do that, I don't have an answer. Currently, I just try to, as I put stock in an FBA, I, I manually go back into eBay and update that stock. Right. Okay. And uh, another question that I had for you, and this is kind of like you basic, you're, you're basically living the dream of every part-time reseller out there right now. Uh, but, I mean, the biggest thing that – Everybody wants to know is, I mean, in your opinion, what? when do you quit your job? When is it time? Good question. Good question. Um, it's time when, A, um, you've got your financial house in order. Uh, it's time when you're so fed up with your job and you have enough sales to, to, to say goodbye. It's time. Um, let's talk about the financial house being in order first. Um, <laughs> All right, Paul. Uh, you, listen, get three months of your expenses banked. Pay off your car. Pay off your credit cards. And don't jump off the cliff if you got mountains of student loans and, cr and car payments and credit cards. That's not the time to quit, guys and gals. Uh, I spent three years getting myself to the point where I had no car payment, no student loan, and no credit cards. And I had three months of expenses paid for when I jumped off the cliff, okay? Um, I would say I would also have liked to have had three months banked of expenses, which I didn't exactly have. I had three months of my income. Uh, I asked for a severance. See, folks, you have not because you asked not. I literally walked into the senior vice president of this Fortune 500 company that I was working for, and I said, I'd like to be transitioned out. And the guy said, interesting. And I said, um, and I would like some time. So he said, let me get this straight. You want to leave with a package? I said, yes, please. <laughs> they gave me four months. Okay? Wow. Um, <clears throat> guys, you can do this. You just have to ask. People are afraid. People say, wow, that's really bold that not only you quit your job, but you ask to be transitioned out with a package. You never know till you ask. Right. Yeah, uh, when I lost my job, they did, They kind of gave me a severance. It was enough to keep me going. I mean, my sales were already high enough that I could uh, cover most of my expenses with just my eBay sales. And it, what I didn't realize at the time was that it was ramping up to quarter four, and the next few months were the busiest months of the year year so I wasn't looking for a job I was just so busy on eBay that just kept it rolling and then you know the sales dropped off in April or whatever and it's like oh my gosh what's going on here because <laughs> I just didn't understand I hadn't been doing it full time or consistently for long enough uh, yeah so let me uh, you made a good you made two great points first of all do it part time I mean learn the thing part time for at least six to nine months preferably a year that's what I did is ten months um, so that you know what you're doing, uh, or at least you have a good idea of what you're doing. So don't don't just quit your job and go. Oh, I'm going to go sell on eBay, and I've not done it before. Make sure you give yourself a good, I would say, a good year doing it part time. Most of you on this uh, Google Hangout are there, so you got that. You can check that box. Um, and then uh, yeah, doing it during Q4 has been a real blessing. I mean. And then that gives you time to ramp it up and uh, reinvest your dollars that you make in Q4. So that's 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 really good. Timing timing is everything. Uh, but do it part time for a while. And uh, man, you can't beat uh, jumping off the cliff and leaving corporate jobs uh, in Q4 to do this full time. If you've if you got your bills paid off, you got some money banked, and you know what you're doing. Right. Well, that's the thing, especially since I was just doing eBay at the time. Uh, I had already had my uh, numbers up, and I had already had like the all these high thresholds for listings that I could do and amount of inventory that I could have listed and uh, basically what I was, how much I was allowed to sell. I didn't have to worry about PayPal holding my money or any of that stuff. So uh, that's really important if you're, you can't just start eBay tomorrow. Now FBA is a little different. You can send them as much as you want, but I mean to get, you really have to have, like you said, 
the sales to plow everything back into your inventory. Um, and it's got to be consistent and you've got to be disciplined and you've got to have high enough sales by the time you quit your job on FBA to be able to have enough extra to live on besides what you're uh, rolling back in. Well said, Paul. Well said. So, yeah. Uh, any Does anybody else on the panel have any questions for Robert? Because, I mean, he's uh, def it's not very often that we get to have a really knowledgeable guest like this. He knows a lot of stuff. And, I mean, you guys have to have something you want to ask him. And we'll, we've got about 20 minutes left. I'm just kind of sitting here in awe a little bit because, <laughs> you know, it's so much good information but in such a positive way way. Right. You know what I mean? That's the thing that um, a lot of people are looking for is that positive motivation and, and um, just something to get them going and keep them going and I think that's a lot of what you provide is that positive beautiful message. So I thank you very much for that. Well Danica thank you but I want to well, tell you guys is look at life is too long to be doing things you don't want to do. And you know, in corporate America, uh, you have you rub some executive the wrong way, and you're labeled, and now all of a sudden that person has the ability to truncate your success and your upward mobility. That's ridiculous. Take your own destiny in your own hands. Uh, Amazon and eBay have given us wonderful platforms to do this, and not only that, they want you to do this. And they want you to be successful. And yeah, I know they're they're the big. They can be your worst enemies on certain days. So can your corporate America job. I mean, there were days in my corporate job where they were my biggest enemy, not the customer. Um, and, and so you just got to have that discipline to know that you're going to have ups and downs in your day. You're going to have ups and downs in your sales. Don't get discouraged. This is a great business, and people, if you are, are just focused and disciplined, and even if you do it wrong, you can still make money and, and make this a great business and a great lifestyle for you and your family. What do you got, Brian? Okay, since you're a family man, how did you talk your family into it, get them on board, or how long did it take? Kind of cover that one. Um, it, it's very difficult to explain, you know, what you do even to your closest family and, you know, they're still kind of wondering, <laughs> wondering what I do and how I do it and why I'm doing it and why I'm coming home with all this stuff. And um, Sometimes you, you can't wait for everybody to get what you're doing. Um, and, and, and so, again, I would just say, know in your heart that this is the right thing and people will follow you, and people, as they see your success, they'll go, "Oh, okay, now I'm getting it." Uh, but yeah, it's been a it's been a transition of getting getting buy-in from from all aspects of of you know my life and my family. Uh, but they're seeing they're seeing it, they're coming around slowly. <laughs> Robert, someone wants to know if you merchant fulfill anything. Hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, this past week I merchant fulfilled a whole bunch of stuff. I found a bolo that I couldn't wait to even get it out online. And I, man, the minute I bought it in the store, I listed it, and within an hour I got orders. So um, I don't know if any of you follow Jessica LaRue. I'm part of her Q4 coaching club. She's a big fan of merchant fulfilling in Q4 on FBA, just because sometimes you don't have time to get it in. And again, I would mix that in. That's not the majority of what I do, uh, but I do have some things currently uh, listed as merchant fulfilled. And um, I, I went and got a whole bunch of uh, padded envelopes, according to what Jessica Larue recommended, and uh, I've been using them. So that's pretty cool. She's awesome. Um, if you guys haven't uh, looked her up, definitely look her up. She is fantastic. Has a lot of great info, and she recommends. Um, during Q4, oh, actually I've seen this from a couple of people, that during Q4, once you get down to the second week of December, third week of December, Merchant Fulfill everything that you get. You know, those big items, put them on Merchant Fulfill. Yeah. You know, you, don't, you can still go out and get those items again and just Merchant Fulfill them because once you're that close to Christmas, people don't care. Well, that's the thing that I've read and I've heard a lot about and I'm going to start trying it myself. When you Merchant Fulfill... As you're buying things, I mean, as you're putting it in the cart, just get on your seller app, scan that label, and or scan the UPC, and just put it up for sale. And, I mean, you'll get 
especially like in the feeding frenzy, November, December, when they're really going nuts. I mean, stuff will sell as soon as you list it. Like they can't keep it in stock. And I mean, you'll you're basically paying for it before you even walk out of the store and have paid for it. I mean, where can you get a business model like that? <laughs> Come on. Hey, uh, I have a question for you, Robert. Have you uh, have you tried any uh, bundling? Yes, uh, I have. Um, I've done. I actually have some listings that I multi um, multi packed. Uh, I currently have a listing that I'm bundling. I haven't have put a lot of energy into it, but um, yeah, it works. You know, bundling certainly. And Jessica Larue is another one that can teach you bundling. I I, I don't. It's it takes time, and right now, as you know, I'm I'm into this sort of rapid fire thing, so I don't do a ton of bundling. But man, if you got the time and the patience, you do have to ramp it up because you've got to get some people to give you some feedback, especially on FBA. You got to get you know help maybe give a few away for free and get some um, what do you call them Re uh, reviews, yeah. And then also, guys, I use the um, um, I use the campaign manager on FBA for, uh, and I'll tell you what. I spend probably sixty, seventy dollars a month, but um, it's about two percent of my sales and the items that I use, and it works. So uh, look into the campaign manager on FBA and put some put some products. You can put keywords on them. Uh, you know who you can also talk to is uh, the Gilmans do a lot of that with their private label. Um, so yeah, you can pay. You can get attention to your bundles and multi packs. Be careful uh, with the multi packs because you got to get those approved now. I had a few grandfathered, so. Um, but now, if you're now if you're taking a manufactured product and you're multi packing it, you got to get it approved first. Right, I've read about that. Jeff Davidson actually talks about it. You're not supposed to multi pack any grocery items. I don't think you can multi pack health and beauty items, and it's always been in effect. It's always been a rule, but uh, they've just started to really enforce it. So uh, you got to watch out for that when you're doing multi packs. Now, as far as the bundling goes, I've I thought about doing a lot of bundling, especially, I, I mean, I don't know if you're doing like Dollar Tree type stuff very often or if you're sticking more to like Costco and Sam's Club or some of the big box stores, but I mean, you walk around in the, uh, you go through Dollar General and you just see racks of $1 items and it's like you're just so tempted to take one of each of color of something and put it in a bundle and sell it for 15 bucks and just know that you can always go back and replant it whenever you want. It can be done. Uh, I would say don't let the um, don't if you want a multi pack you kill you still can um, so don't let that stop you just just make sure you put the listing together and get it approved uh, put it as inactive you know get it all listed get the pictures taken and then get it on inactive on FBA and then ask Seller Central if you can do it and 90% of the time I'm hearing you can people are multi-packing still as a model um, even though it's uh, a gated type of situation but you can ask for permission and then you just keep uh, you know a log of their approvals because um, you know depends on who you talk to in, in Amazon uh, but as long as you have documentation that they approved it because um, I, I was a little paranoid about one of my multi packs and I said hey is it okay if I because I was about to restock and I'm like hey is this okay they're like yeah you you had it multi pack before the rule went into effect you're good um, always better to ask for permission ahead of time from Amazon before you do something uh, one of the things I just found uh, on sale uh, was a you know nicotine product you know one of those cessation things I was a little concerned because you know there's those are controlled substances. So I before I sent it in, I put it on a listing as inactive, and I sent Seller Central and I said, "Hey, is it okay?" They came back said, "Yep," and then they put the listing up for me, made it active for me. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, just don't just just cross you cross your T's, dot your eyes, be careful, ask Amazon before you do stuff, don't put your account in jeopardy. You know, John Gorillo had documented that whole thing. He's a million dollar seller. And last June, he sent in some silly thing like uh, sunscreen, and they knocked him down for six or eight weeks. A million dollar seller, guys. Yeah, I've read, we've all heard the horror story of the guy that had 100,000 items, and he sold one counterfeit DVD, and they just completely shut down everything, made him pay to destroy everything, and he was banned forever from Amazon. And I mean, that's like the one 
that's that story that you Google FBA, and that's one of the first things that comes up. But uh, yeah, it's their rules. It's their rules. You got to play by their game. But man, I I don't mind playing by their rules because and their rules change, so you got to stay on top of it. And groups like this are what helps me stay on top of it. Someone was wanting to know what um, your percentages of Amazon versus eBay. Ninety-nine <laughs> percent Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, this, that's why I love talking to you guys because the Scanner Monkeys had me on, you know, on uh, on their on their spreecast. Uh, I think two two weeks ago as a as a up and coming, you know, success story. Um, and it's nice to talk to those guys, but they've got FBA figured out. Um, and so it's kind of like, yeah, 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 we know the story. But talking to you guys, it's kind of the different opposite way. I learned so much from you about eBay. I learned from Danny Ackerman now. Um, but I think I can share some of my, you know, what I've learned on, on FBA with some of you all. And some of you all are doing great on FBA too, so this is probably redundant for you. Well, one thing I've noticed about these Hangouts is, I mean, you don't just learn stuff from the guys that are professionals or that are really high level, that are operating at a high level. I mean, you can learn from somebody who's just getting started. They've got some idea, and nobody even thought of it before doing it that way because, I mean... It, it's done this way, and it's like, oh wow, that's amazing. Why? Did, how'd you think of that? And you know, they just figured it out on their own. But I mean, when you've got people that are just starting out, their insight can be uh, just as important as somebody who's been doing a million dollars a year. So, so hey, um, Robert, um, as far as uh, your business, what what do you see yours looking like in say five years? Like, what's the future of of your Amazon business? What what will it look like? Oh, that is a great question. Um, what is your first name? Mike. Mike. Okay. Hey, Mike. Um, yeah, I think you know more people need to ask themselves that question you just asked. And I would say I have a lot more clarity in the last week than uh, if you had asked me that question two weeks ago, <laughs> Mike. And um, I, I am going to create a strictly uh, private label uh, platform. So you are going to get away with, from uh, just doing the retail arbitrage and everything, and you're going to start working on actual products to sell. I've actually been doing the same thing. Uh, I've got, man, I've got a buddy. He's in a certain industry, uh, but it's a little bit controversial. But he's an inventor. He's got his own company, and he's been helping me a lot with some of his suggestions and how he sources and or how he's sourced in the past, some of the things that he's looked at. And, I mean, there's a lot out there. It's amazing what you can find. When uh, when you look, for, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, let me um, let me just Mike. Uh, so I would think you know within another year I would be tripling my my um gross revenues within the next year. So I'm I'm hoping to be um you know close to a hundred thousand a month by the time uh this time next year rolls around. Um, and I would hope that eighty percent of that is going to be uh private label or um you know, major replens that I'm wholesaling. A wholesale also, I, I don't think I would abandon brand names because brand names are so easy to sell. Uh, currently, I have a product that um, I started out just selling, you know, 10 a week and it mushroomed into 130 a week, and now I'm actually having the product drop ship to the Bullards, who is a uh, interim um, a company that's prepping it and getting it ready to send to Amazon for me, so I'm not even touching that inventory currently. Hmm. Robert, I do have a question for you. Hi, I'm morning. I'm James. Um, Hi, James. Question I have is uh, in regards to organic products. The person I'm talking with, she's created an organic uh, uh, mosquito repellent, organic uh, body spray, uh, organic uh, hand sanitizer. Um, what things will I have to look out for with uh, the word organic? Well, uh, I'm not an expert on the chemistry part, you know, um, so I, you know, I don't know how that works with Amazon. Are you going to sell them on Amazon? James? Yes, it'll be a private later label. She's created this item herself. She uh, produces it and packages it and everything. Yeah, I would get the MS, you know, uh, hopefully she's got MSDS sheets and such. I would, man, if I were you, I would throw those at Amazon and make sure, because if you're going to, you know, try to stock them in their warehouses, um, you know, remember, Amazon's your partner, too, so 
Um, they know it's good for their employees at the fulfillment centers. They know it's good for the consumer. Uh, so I would definitely, you know, cross all those uh, T's and dot those I's. But uh, I love organic because it's a great niche and um, it has a good following. In fact, you know, green and organic, sustainable is, is kind of the way I'm going with some of the private labeling that I'm going to be doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah she created these items and uh, has been selling them like crazy at, at little yoga shops that she supplies them to, but has no distribution. So yeah, I'm just gonna get this into Amazon. You are her distribution, but yeah. make sure you you know you've got a good enough prenup where. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, yeah yes. that's one of the biggest problems with dealing with private distributors. First of all, I mean, how long are they gonna keep doing it? Is it worth it to them to keep doing it? How much can they uh, even come close to uh, providing you with enough product? I mean, what kind of uh, I mean, you say that she's making this stuff herself. I mean, what kind of production can she actually put out? That's and, the thing. And, and, I mean, and, I know that the uh, from start to finish, it'll cost one less than one dollar for a packaged bottle. Uh, and and yeah. the amount that she can do, um, I'm assuming, just uh, depends on time. Uh, that's one thing we'll get into. Yeah. Um, I was just reading another uh, comment. Let's make sure I answer your question, uh, James. So, yeah, I mean, once she sees what you're doing on Amazon, I mean, it's pretty easy to duplicate. So I just want to make sure you don't get burned in the process, you know. Mm -hmm. But look at, look at, scared money is scared money. So do it. Learn from it. Make the money you can while you can, knowing that, you know, you, it may be, you, you may have to move on. But look, you're going to learn a ton in the process. Hopefully you'll make a lot of money. And if she picks up on it and duplicates it, shame on her uh, if it violates the agreement you have up front. Yeah, and you also have to realize, I mean, it's uh, you'll at least learn the process of doing your own uh, product. So that's in and of itself. Actually doing it is always better than reading about it. But we've got a question from Jake. Go ahead, Jake. What do you got for him? It's a good question. Um, Earlier you were talking about uh, rolling the profits back into the business and um, I agree with that 100%. A lot of people find themselves in a position where they've lost their job and they can't work due to some unforeseen reason and this is out of necessity their job. Um, they turn to this because they don't have the other option. How do you roll it back into the company, or what advice can you give the person who can't afford to always roll it back into the business when they need it for bill money? And, uh, Jake, they can't get a job either? Let's yeah. say for, yeah, argument's sake, they have some disability, and but they don't get disability from the state. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on what skills they have. Um, they could supplement their income by be being a vendor on something like Odesk or Fiverr. Um, uh, you know, I'm all about e-commerce and, you know, doing it in your, in your house. And so for those people that can't get out maybe or, you know, I would recommend they find alternate ways to make money online to supplement their eBay income. And, again, uh, I pay a guy on Fiverr, you know, ten, twenty, thirty dollars a week to do my, you know, backgrounds and and graphic design. And I know he's got a lot of other customers. Find a little skill that you, and most people have skills they can they can sell, you know, to uh, supplement their uh, their income while they're plowing money back into their eBay or Amazon business. Odesk, uh, Fiverr. Uh, there's a couple other freelance um, websites they can go to. You can even go on Reddit and just follow, just pay attention to the threads. I mean, there are always people on Reddit looking for somebody to do some little task, and they'll tell you, hey, I need this done. This is how much I'm willing to pay. Who's up for it? And, you know, if you're willing to do it for that, then you can jump on it and get it done. I mean, you're right. There are ways. It's not that hard to make $20, $30, $50 a day, which, I mean, if you're on a limited income and you're, like maybe you've got some kind of disability or whatever, if you've got those skills where you can at least do some of those basic tasks, I mean, 50 bucks a day, 20, 30, 40 bucks a day, that adds up when you're doing it five days a week uh, or even just a few days a week. It's 
we talk all these big numbers like, wow, we're doing $5,000 a month in sales, $100,000 a month in sales, whatever. You don't, not everybody needs that to survive. Nobody, not everybody needs that to get by on. I mean, if you're uh, getting by on a lot less than that, then, you know, you can, there are lots of creative ways to make money. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, websites. I can't remember the one, but you can rent out a room to people as they're coming in and out. Someone probably knows what that is. I don't remember the name of that. Air, Airbnb. Air, Airbnb. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy who's paying his mortgage with you know guests coming in on the weekends, or um, he doesn't have to leave his house. He just keeps it tidy and takes pictures and throws it up and quotes a price again. And uh, if you can drive, you can get an Uber account and start. Taxing people around for money. Right. There's so many different things you can do. But uh, that's all the time we've got for today. And I want to thank you, Robert, for coming on. You've been a great guest. Anytime you want to come on, you just let me know. I'd, uh, I'd love to have you again in the future. Uh, don't forget, everybody, shout out to Golden Finger Picker, Chad. Uh, we're having a Halloween party tonight. There's going to be a Halloween contest. I think it's a $50 first prize for the best costume. So if you've got a costume, and you want to get on the resellers meet and greet tonight, go ahead and send Chad a uh, message on Facebook, and he'll try and get you on. I'm not sure if he's already full or what, but, you know, there's all, there's definitely going to be people dropping out, I'm sure, at the last minute. But uh, make sure and check that out tonight. What time is it, guys? I'm not even sure. Is it 8 o'clock? Does it start at 8 or 9 o'clock uh, Eastern? 9 Eastern, I believe. Yeah, because it's 8 o'clock Central, so, yeah, 9 Eastern. All right, so 9 Eastern, uh, so basically 12 hours from the start of the show. Uh, <laughs> anyway, have have a good day, everybody. Uh, I'm glad that we could have Robert on, and if uh, anybody has any questions or concerns for him, you know, just go ahead and hit him up on Facebook, and you can also uh, follow him on his YouTube channel, RGB Bagley, or I'm sorry, RB3 Bagley. And I did make a I did write it down in the comments of this video, so you can find it easily that way. And everybody else on this panel makes haul videos, uh, how-to videos. Make sure you check their uh, check out their YouTube videos, YouTube channels. Subscribe to them. Uh, comment, like, subscribe here, and we will talk to you all in the morning, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Thanks. Bye, y'all. See you guys. Bye.